This cluttered shelving in my home office has been stressing me out for way too long, and today we're gonna fix it. These shelves have just been an eyesore, and I don't even use 80% of the stuff in here. So we're gonna make space for the things that I actually use in the new cabinet, and put these shelves with everything else up in the attic. It feels so much better with all these shelves out of here. Look at all the space that I have to work with. Look, Look at all this floor look. space. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. What I really need though is some small drawers for all my little tech goodies. And then I'll add some open shelving on the sides for my larger camera gear. And with an eight foot countertop across the whole thing, I think I can use this outlet down there and integrate some power into it and make it a really cool tech workstation. I'm Brad from Fix This Build That. Let's build something awesome. I've got all the parts cut for the two cabinets that are gonna be on the side with the open shelving, and I can barely keep track of my keys. So trying to keep track of a bunch of parts that aren't labeled is extremely difficult. Using blue tape to write down your part labels is gonna help a ton, because if you make the wrong cut, it's pretty easy to end up wasting a sheet of plywood, have to go out and get more. So I highly recommend labeling your parts, and maybe one day I'll find my keys too. I don't know. I want to be able to stand at the cabinet and do work on the top. So I'm going to be putting toe kicks on that. That means I need toe kicks on all four of the sides for these cabinets. So I'm going to lay out those toe kicks and then do the cutting over on the bandsaw, which will make short work of it. But now I can switch over to the joinery. I've got all the connecting pieces as well as the bottoms and the middle shelves. I'm gonna put pocket holes in there and I can start assembling the cabinets and we'll start seeing this come together. All right, this cabinet is quite a bit larger than the ones I normally do. This is three feet wide and the biggest ones I normally do are 30 inches. So I'm gonna have the side down flat to start off with and I'll just use this little bottom piece that is gonna be the toe kick. That way I can make sure that the bottom rests exactly on top of this toe kick and then I'll flip it over and you know, work my magic, it'll be good. All right, now I can put in this little bottom piece and it should fit perfectly. And the pocket holes are on the outside because there's going to be a quarter inch strip that goes along the entire toe kick to cover it up and that will get painted. And if you're wondering how I magically was screwing this together with no clamps, I put in a little stopper in the bench dog holes on the back of my bench. So you do need to have something behind so that it won't slip away as you're driving it in. Okay, when I said work my magic, apparently I meant uh, magically forget how to make cabinets. <laughs> I was so concerned uh, with this offset bottom, which I'll talk about later, that I forgot that you need to assemble from the top to the bottom if you've got pocket holes on the underside. It's gonna be more difficult to access them now. So I would definitely assemble from the top down and I'll do that on the next one. This is actually not that bad. Maybe I'll just do it. Maybe I'll just cut this part out of the video and you'll never even know that I was doubting myself. Probably not. Here's these little blocks that I was talking about. And as much as I hate dropping screws down through a bench with dog holes in it, uh, having little places that you can have a stop is really nice because then I could just push against the side, put the screws in and I didn't really need clamps. I could just uh, use my force and a drill. All right, now I can flip this over and just attach the top pieces. 
Now, after a lot of uh, setup and thought, this is what I've come up to. And what I'm trying to show you guys here is that you don't need large clamps to assemble cabinets. All I've been using is squeeze clamps here so far. So as long as you can clamp things down to your bench or have some kind of stops, then you can do it. On this stop, I just have a little scrap block, which is just gonna keep this whole front aligned. So I can push this top support up against that and know that it will be flush with the front and not move as I'm drilling it. And then this piece here will keep it flush from the top. All I have to do is put pressure in this way against both of these and I can screw down and and that basically acts as my clamp and I don't need anything else. All right, I've got the first cabinet all done, but I need another one, lucky for me. Chuck got me something special for Christmas. It's called a Ditto 5000. It's supposed to be a voice activated parts duplicator. A Ditto, on. Ooh, activate scanning mode. Scanning mode. See how this thing works. Scanning, 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 scanning. Activate duplicate mode. Duplicate mode. Ooh. Duplication, 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 oh! duplication, duplication, duplication. Get duplication, out of here. Duplication complete. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is amazing. <coughs> oh. Wait, what mode is this? Oh boy. To give these cabinets a little bit more beefy feel, I went ahead and cut some one by two material for face frames. So that is gonna go just around the front edges as well as the shelf. It's definitely easier to paint the cabinets before you put the face frames on, so that's why I went ahead and did that first. The face frames are gonna have just the two uprights and then three of the horizontal members, one for the top, bottom, and then one for the shelf. I'm gonna go ahead and do the top and the bottom and then get that middle one positioned exactly by referencing it on the cabinet. So now I can line the face frame up onto the cabinet. I'm just gonna use a little squeeze clamp. And with the bottom and top aligned, I can mark the top. And that's gonna reduce any sanding that I have to do in between the face frame and the shelf. Now I can just line up my center style on those marks. That should give me a pretty close face frame. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. And then I'm gonna attach them with glue and some me nails to the front of the cabinet flush trim them, and then I'll be ready to fill everything, prime it, and these will be pretty much done. The cabinets are both ready for final paint, but I'm not gonna do that just yet because in my experience, if I go ahead and final paint everything, I still have things to do. I'm gonna be moving them around the shop. They will get beat up and I'll just have to go back and touch them up. And right now I'm gonna move on to the part that I'm most excited about, which is gonna be a seven drawer cabinet that is gonna go right in between these two outer ones. And this is gonna be the perfect spot to keep everything organized. So I just have it within arm's reach while I'm at my desk. And the frameless cabinet is put together almost exactly like the other two. So we're just gonna hit the high notes and a quick build montage.
All right, and just like that, we've got a little cabinet here for the center. The only difference that I'm gonna have for the frame, I'm not gonna put a face frame on it because it will have drawers that will overlay the side. So I'm gonna use some little thin poplar strips and I'm just going to put these around the edge. And what this is gonna do is just gonna cover up this plywood edge and it's gonna be a nice surface for paint as well as it's gonna wear better being solid wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim these to size, brad nail and glue them on there. And then we'll be ready to make the drawers. Yeah. All right, the next thing up is the drawers. And I know a lot of people are scared about drawers. They just don't like doing them. And I used to be that way as well. But it's just like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And if you get a nice, simple process, then it'll really help you. I do have a whole video where I outline my process on that. So if you want all the nitty gritty details, you can go check that out. But I'm gonna use this sheet of plywood to make seven drawers for the cabinet. And I'm gonna be doing some edge banding. So I'll put this edge banding on the tops just to give them a really nice feel and a quarter inch box. Bottom. It's gonna be a lot of work. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, let's talk money. Woodworking is expensive and I spend a lot of money on projects and a lot of that goes to the Home Depot who is the sponsor of today's video. Now I just signed up for Pro Extra which is their loyalty program that is built for pros. And it's awesome because it saves me money on that money I'm already spending and it saves me time because it's got some really cool features in the app to help you manage your business. And the program is totally free and it doesn't matter what trade you're in or how much your spending level is, you can still get all of the same benefits. So it's got cool things like exclusive deals for pros Pros, you can earn reward points and you can manage and track your business. You can manage the whole program right from your phone in the app or you can do it on desktop as well if that's your thing. So to track your spending all you have to do is scan your Pro Extra virtual ID and once you do that it will know exactly all of the spending and you can even assign it to different jobs that you're working on. And as you track your spending you can get closer to rewards which give you credit towards your purchases or double that amount for tool rentals which is pretty awesome. So this program has really been helpful to me already. I think it's a great program for pros. If you want to find out more information, check the link below to sign up for Pro Extra. And a big thank you to Home Depot for sponsoring today's video. Now making seven drawers takes a little bit of time, but you know what takes more time? <laughs> is messing them up and having to fix them. In today's episode of Mistakes Were Made, instead of adding an eighth of an inch to the front piece of the drawer, I actually subtracted an eighth of an inch. So I am a quarter inch too narrow on my drawers and that is a problem. Now I will tell you what, it's better than being a quarter inch too wide. If you're gonna screw up drawers, make sure you undersize them. But luckily it is a fairly easy fix. So I just cut seven strips. Uh, these are just under a quarter of an inch and I'm actually going to attach these to the sides of the drawers here and then that way it will shim it out and take up that space in between the drawer and the drawer slides. So I've got some soft closed drawer slides and those are the ones I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna try a new method for attaching these. I'm gonna leave the slide fully intact and then just line this pull out with the front of the drawer, hold it in place and pull back the rest of the slide and then that exposes the holes here. And I'll just use a little clamp to hold it in place while I'm screwing everything together. Then I can just pop off the drawer slide the rest of the way. It exposes that final screw and I can tag that one in there. I'll just repeat the thing on the other sides and the rest of the drawers that we can get them installed. The drawers are ready for install. I went ahead and painted the edge of the front so that uh, I don't have to get paint on the slides when I install them. So now it becomes easy. All I have to do, set the drawer slide in and I'm gonna install them with the cabinet on its side just so we don't have to fight gravity. So then I can just start off with the bottom one, use a little spacer there to get it in place and then offset that slide per the manufacturer's recommendations. And then I'm ready to go. And I have cut these slides so that they will work with the drawer fronts that I'm gonna be using. And all of that information is available in the plans for this build. You can pick them up, fixthisbuildthat.com. There's a link down in the description if you want to build your own set. All 
right, it's time for the moment of truth. We'll see if uh, the repair on the narrow drawers worked as well as all the alignment. Hopefully everything will be fine. Let's find out. One works. Let's put the rest of them and see if they work as well. A little rough on that one, but it's okay. All right, excellent. You know, if you have issues, they can still turn out okay. So I think we're pretty good now. Now for the drawer fronts, you could use plywood, but I like to use a solid wood. And I have some more poplar here that I'm gonna cut down for the drawer fronts. It's just a lot better than the plywood fronts here because they're gonna hold up better to wear and tear. So I'm gonna get these all milled up and attached, but before I do that, I'm gonna have to paint everything. So I'll do the finished painting on this. And while I'm at that, I'm gonna go ahead and finish paint the other cabinets that had already gotten done. So drawer fronts, paint everything up that we can get to install. Let's do it. I've got one of the end cabinets back up here because I didn't really talk about it, but there are going to be nailer strips on the back and I did not install these before because I wanted to have an easier time painting. So I've got one that's gonna go uh, right up here in the back and then another one down here on this lower shelf. And that'll allow me to attach them to wall and secure everything. But now that I've got the final paint on everything, I'm gonna go ahead and get these installed. Right now with those mounting cleats on there, I can flip this on its face. And uh, I did put a blanket down here just to protect the paint. And now I can put in the quarter inch plywood back, which I've already cut to size and painted. Now we are ready for install and I went ahead and painted the wall the nice gray and you may have noticed that uh, only half of the wall was painted before because we're working our way around the room as we remodel so deal with it. But I'm going to bring the cabinets in here get them installed and then we can work on the top. Now I did not cut the baseboards and so I installed a little strip on the back of the cabinets on the two outer ones so that they can be attached to the wall into the studs just to give them a lot of strength. And then the middle cabinet is actually going to be attached to the sides of both of those because it's not going all the way up against the wall because I'm leaving room for the outlets down here. All right, after a little bit of fiddling and shimming, everything is good. And you might be thinking, Brad, you just covered up those outlets with the cabinet. How are you gonna access it? I left the back off of these center drawers and so I can just pull it out and then access the plugs that way. Also, the only thing I'm gonna have plugged in is this strip here, which this is gonna be a recessed power strip that will fit in right into the top. I'm gonna channel out a little hole for it and that'll plug into the only outlet that is left down there. So I can do everything up top and it should all be fine in theory at least. The top is looking great on here, and now I can put in the integrated power outlets on top. That slides right in, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed, put on the toe kick and get all the drawers in there, and then we'll be ready for a reveal. This is such an awesome upgrade over those shelves. I love having this huge work service. I've got a little maker station over here that I can do electronics on or basically anything I want to. The integrated power on the top is gonna let me charge all the things that I need to, plus the open shelving for my larger items and the drawers that have all my little tech goodies in them, though I do wanna work on some organization for those drawers later. Now I've got this huge open wall that I can do things with too. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think I should put up here? Maybe a TV, maybe a whiteboard, or maybe something else. 
If you want to build your own version, I do have plans. I got a link down below in the description. But if you want to see the rest of the videos of how I've transformed the office, I got a playlist queued up for you right there. A big thank you to all those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.